Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back. Or if it's your first time, welcome to Skylar Reacts. Today, we got the dark, creepy, airy messages in Not Like Us. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. As always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and yeah, let's get it. Should I do full screen? Face get him. Boy, if you don't pick your face up, get him. Drake has no aura left. Bro looks like a real 40 year old white man. Get him. Aging like milk. Get him. I thought black don't crack. Get him. <laughs> Hello Kitty on your nails is wild. Get him. This man is stressed and depressed. Get him. Hey, for real, why he really look like he been crying? Bro. <laughs> Drake. Bro, why he going in on Drake like that though? <laughs> Get up. You know me, I'm I'm YouTube's biggest villain. The new biggest villain. The reason why I say that is because my my opinion's not gonna be popular. You might not like anything I gotta say. I think I need to make one thing clear on this channel before we begin. I don't give a f what none of y'all think. I'ma just be honest with you. When y'all get mad at me and say I'm unsubbing, <laughs> okay, get your soft a up out of here. I, I There's now billions of other people in this world, bro. Get the step in, bro. Like what Martin Lawrence said, get the step in. <laughs> I, like I don't get it. You can't cancel something one that don't care when i see men typing that Facts. i feel like you guys got grow hands your feminine hands hey for a small channel we kind of low-key doing some numbers i mean here and there type b let's get this video up to a thousand likes let's just run it up real quick run it up one time because if we run it up you feel me the numbers get ran up then Hit everybody the like see it. please help me introduce these drake gobblers to their newest villain their newest arch enemy is it arch enemy or arc enemy i don't even know if i said that shit right to be honest with you. i don't feel like doing it let's get this video to a thousand likes Let's irritate these Drake gobblers. I've been a mess since every girl I left went and got a new man, but I'm the new version of Fresh Prince. And the band's got bumped for real. I switch wifey every season like Uncle Phil. Everything he do is so <laughs> cringe now, it's embarrassing. Drake! Ah! It's been a couple of days since k -Dot. Bro, that meek sound, bro. I don't know why meek... What Meek Mill be thinking sometimes when he be, like, doing or saying the dumbest shit? Like, what make you think? That's it. Get up! Was well, gonna go like, come on, bro. <laughs> Release is not like us video, and Drake is still not breathing. Kendrick Lamar is very analytical and proved over and over how war ready he truly is. He feeds social media's fix of having a ton of hidden messages and codes to decipher throughout his career. So it only made sense that he would do the same for arguably one of the best diss tracks of all time, Facts. Not Like Us. In the opening scene, Kendrick knocks on the door. And he doesn't just do any type of knock. He does one of the most famous knocks called shaving a haircut two bits. So of course I go Wait, they have a name for the knock? What what wait, what's he what he call it? Uh, he does one of the most famous knocks called shaving a haircut two bits. Shaving a haircut two bits? That's the name of that knock. Interesting. So of course I googled it and you won't be surprised what came up because it blew my mind and I, I don't know exactly what he's trying to get at but it so the tune for shaving a haircut two bits originated in 1899 from Charles Hale's minstrel song at a dark town cakewalk this mm. particular knock or jingle was most often used at the end of a piece of music for comic effect but that's not where it stops at. What is a dark town cakewalk? When you go look up the word dark town, dark town was an African American neighborhood in Atlanta, Georgia. Dark town was characterized oh. in the 1930s as a hellhole of squalor, degradation, sickness, crime, and misery. The term. It's something like they're trying to describe every hood in America. What the hell, bro? They call it dark town, bro. That's like the most racist thing, dark town, because a bunch of African American live there. <laughs> Dark Town was also used generically hell? in Atlanta and the rest of the South to refer to African American districts. And what's really crazy about all this is because in that very room that he goes into after he does this jingle is where he brings up You call future when you didn't see the club. Like, what? No baby help you get your lingo up. Basically doubling down on how Drake is a culture vulture, a colonizer, and how he stole a lot from the Atlanta scene. You run to Atlanta when you need a few dollars. No, you not a to the knock origin from Atlanta. You see, this is this is why you have to respect artists, no matter what you think about artists. Once you have an artist that can actually like think deep down and get like these little clues without blatantly saying it, bro, that's like eye opening, bro. Like the fact that people can able to like able to defy decipher like all these music videos and lyrics and want to like sit down 
and actually like, think about these things is bro it's mind blowing. Yeah, I need to be detectives, bro. <laughs> You're a fucking colonizer. Shaving a haircut two bitch jingle is probably the creepiest, eeriest thing that I've learned today doing research on this whole not like us video. Cause I had no idea that that Facts. tune was even was even derived from dark humor, from being racist. Like who wouldn't thought that? We've all done that knock as kids or heard it in cartoons. And I also got the vibe that this was like a crazy house. I mean, the door itself with the little window, when he opens the little window and all you see is tommy the clown's eyes and look bro that's a that's a scary sight i ain't gonna lie <laughs> for a clown every especially with tommy the clown to like open that bro that's a scary sight <laughs> It's kind of creepy and then he asks what's the password and he says i see dead people what's the password i see dead people yeah, that's that sounds like an insane asylum. He goes in there, and if you notice, his hands are always in the sides of his jacket. As oh, as if he's like in a suicide. Oh, and that's like in a stray jacket type of. Um, as if thing? he was in a stray jacket. Yeah. So again. I did my research. In the 1960s, mental asylums in the South would take advantage of the vulnerable and would admit black people to gain control. Jim Crow laws would enforce black people into mental asylums as they were able to use as a new slavery method. This was about getting wow. access to free black labor. The black patients endured abuse, neglect, violence, and forced labor, which took place in the states such as Mississippi, Alabama, and you guessed it, Georgia. This this was an obvious jab at Drake for taking advantage of black artists as a cheat code. He jumps from hood to hood and steals their wave, especially Atlanta artists. Also, Drake's infamous black. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't even know this was Drake until like I really look into it and I'm like, wait a minute. That's Aubrey. The fact that this is out on the internet surfacing and this man still have a fan base, bro. Bro, I don't. I, I don't know what else to say, bro. Like this, this, this alone should have been knock his ass off. Like <laughs> he should have no fans, especially black fans, bro. Face picture, such a disgrace to say the least. Nothing funny about this. And what he doesn't realize is that whoever talked him into doing this felt like he dominated Drake. This is their form of buck breaking. No black American would even think to belittle themselves like Drake did in this Facts. picture. He clearly is unaware of the meaning and how he was being put through a humiliation ritual. In this same pic, he is also wearing, you guessed it again, a Jim Crow shirt. So when it comes to the mental asylum theme that he got going on in this video it's all tied to one word and that is jim crow jim crow was taking advantage of black people as mental patients in the asylums in the georgia state drake was taking advantage of black artists in georgia state the name jim drake is known as wheelchair jimmy his character <laughs> name was jimmy in degrassi and again in the blackface picture he has the jim crow shirt on man k dot is literally on this man's neck about not being black enough i don't know about y'all but that's eerie that gave me the chills and i'm kind of annoyed because i'm just like i wonder what else is in this video that i couldn't figure out if bro i even called it when i reacted to that video i'm like i know there's a lot of stuff that's gonna go above my head because like artists had just just have a way to think so deep in like they're just layers on layers and there's something like double entendres and all type of bro this is so, there's like layers to it bro if something as small and minuscule as a jingle can mean that much, what the hell else is in this video? This scene mm. looks identical to the scene from Family Matters music video, which a Dark Lanes demo tape Drake is being yeeted away by Kendrick's aura. And a guy wearing a City of Compton hat dancing next to Kendrick represents Compton having his back. This next scene has so oh. many Easter eggs, it's insane. Some would say it's a reach, but I think Kada is a wicked genius. In the scene where Kendrick is doing push-ups, he has a picture in the background that's off the wall, referencing the diss track that Drake said, I know my picture on the wall when y'all cook up. Why in the hell would I? Like, how do you remember all these little stuff that Drake said to like, no one, I'm gonna put this in a video, but I'm gonna put it in a way like, it's like, it's not too in your face, but not too subtle. So it's like, like how, man? Like, how do you think about that? 
track that Drake said. I know my picture on the wall when y'all cook up. Why in the hell would I have your picture on my wall, Drake? That shit can't even get hung up. It's on it's on the ground. It is off the wall. Off the wall is also a statement we say when you talking crazy. No one really <laughs> says that anymore, but for K Dot and Drake's age group, that's an old term. You off the wall with this one, or you going off the wall which means you're wall. talking crazy or being a weirdo. Also, Drake referred to himself as Michael Jackson. Run away from Michael, nigga, beat it, nigga, beat it. And Kada called himself Prince. Prince and Michael Jackson have known to be rivals and feud back in their prime. Kada took shots at Drake being MJ by saying, hey, nigga, Prince outlived Mike Jack, nigga, boom. Which implies <laughs> that MJ is Drake. He said Prince lived off Michael, Michael Jackson, nigga, boom. Hey. He do got a point. He in line. He in line. I don't know what the bomb from because he didn't get gunned down, but like he in line. Drake, who is the fan favorite in sales, but Kendrick being Prince was the underdog who was just as talented, wasn't as popular, but Prince wasn't the guy that wanted to be popular. He was more low key. So the off the wall. Which is kind of like Kendrick too, because Kendrick doesn't really care about popularity and all that. Like he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Drake, on the other hand, this man cares more than anybody else. Like every single like TikTok dance and trend and stuff, bro. Drake want to be on top of that ASAP. <laughs> a picture is in reference to Michael Jackson's Off the Wall album. In the same scene, K Dot is doing push-ups, trolling Drake when Drake said, "Top say drop, you better drop and give him fifty." Asking K Dot to hurry and drop his disses. But also implied that Kendrick dropped and gave 50% to Top Dog when he was under contract. But what's funny mm. about this scene is Kendrick ironically stops his push-ups at 17, one away from 18. If that ain't diabolical, I'll So y'all really sat there and count how many push-ups he did? And he stopped at seven. This is what I'm talking about, bro. This is this is what it this is what I'm talking about. When it comes to me reacting, bro, like there's no way I can sit there and decipher all that just watching on my first react. There's no way, bro. Like, you have to sit down and like digest every scene by scene and like think, bro. <laughs> I don't know what is. We all know Drake like them underage, man. And in the same clip, Kendrick starts to dance just like Drake, where Drake did this dance with you guessed it, a minor. <laughs> Kendrick had a date on his jacket, 8-8-2024. Is that when his album drops? Is that also a shout out to Kobe for his jersey numbers? So mm. I did some digging and found something even more deeper and somewhat chilling. The 8th of August, American independence is celebrated on the 4th of July, but many African American communities in Western Kentucky also commemorate another day of freedom. The 8th oh. of August is both an emancipation celebration and a homecoming. It's been a tradition tradition since the 1860s. It's chilling because he continues to call out Drake's blackness, but also him not being an American. We all know Drake cosplays to be that black American gangster. Kendrick is continuing his trend to drop things on- Imagine saying cosplay to be a black American. <laughs> bro, that shit is so out of hand, bro. Like. Who cosplayed to be, oh my God. Drake's blackness, but also him not being an American. We all know Drake cosplays to be that black American gangster. Kendrick is continuing his trend to drop things on historical black days. Ken and friends on Juneteenth, not like us on July 4th, and whatever he has planned that's gonna supposedly come out August, August 8th, 8? 2024. Whoa. All those dates have something in common, independence. Whether it's black independence or American independence, something that Drake has no idea what oh yeah he did drop on 4th of july too damn what it is to be like all right so august 8th i gotta put it down on my calendar bro <laughs> a black man or even a black american and also the word independent is very important to a rapper in the industry and i think that's a jab to drake in his lifetime deal with lucian grange drake sold his soul universal owns him for life i think the most damn. obvious and most trolling scene is kendrick playing hopscotch to the part when he says a minor man you already know what that's about a little girl's kids game then we head over to the shipping containers, the eeriest scene of them all. We all yeah, know I was wondering why I have to have like some type of like symbol or something on one of these containers. 
example that human trafficking is widely known to use shipping containers to transfer victims overseas. Kendrick is doubling down on the rumor that Drake is into trafficking. What about the scene of Kendrick staring at the owl and putting him in the cage? It had a dark tone of different symbolisms. One, he put Drake in his place. Drake being an alleged PDF, he's locking him up where he belongs. Sit that ass down on time out, bro. Number two, <laughs> Maya Angelou's I Know Why a Caged Bird Sings. All Drake is good at is singing to females. He's not a real rapper, especially since people write his bars for him, and also insinuating that True. he's a snitch, doubling down on Drake having paperwork when he was robbed. Also, Drake is labeled as a snitch for all the alleged cease and desist letters he sent to Kendrick, Metro, and French Montana. That's something that even Rick Ross called him out on. I think the most insane part of the video was Whitney dancing in a wife beater, Damn. also known as a white beater, but we all call it in the hood, wife beater. Drake flat out <laughs> lied and said that K-Dot beats his wife, and they aren't happily together, with his kid being Dave Freeze. Man, that kid has them damn Kendrick ears. Look, look at them ears. It, those ain't Kendrick ears. Yeah, those ears are identical, bro. <laughs> identical yeah the same shape everything yeah stop it drake stop it i think that shit was the funniest part they're dancing happily together just proving that drake's a pathological liar hypocritical to have your biracial wife in a music video with you but in that same song you're talking down about people being biracial or being half black or etc i actually want to i don't think anyone down downplayed or down a touch on this because it's getting out of hand and how dense a lot of people are kendrick yeah. isn't saying drake isn't black enough because he's biracial his kids and fiance are also biracial come on bro he wouldn't be talking about his own kids and his wife he's saying drake lacks culture he's a jewish kid born and raised in the suburbs of i Can mean do you expect drake to have culture bro he's a canadian motherfucker bro he goes on degrassi bro like this man Drake had one. This man never been in the hood, the trenches, or anything. This man does not have any. He does whatever it takes to fit in and to be on the top and to be trending, bro. And he did that for a very long time, and he's one of the best at doing that. That just that's just basically it. He has no, you know what I'm saying? He did what he had to do. Everyone has a persona. So that's just his. A child star who lived a great life with no real life lessons. This is our dining room, and uh, here's my mother. Now we're gonna check out my space. And through here, this is my living room. I like a chilling vibe, that's my favorite thing. And then through here, this is the this is my comfort area. As you can see, I recently did laundry. This is actually a very nice couch. Drake identifies as Jewish. You don't understand how big you're about to be in the Jew world, right? I, you don't understand how big you're <laughs> Yo, you, you first of all, I live in an all Jewish. Bro, them Jew bro, them they got money, bro. I'm telling you. So where, where, where is that? Forest Hill. Okay. I went to I went to a predominantly Jewish school growing up. I definitely had a bar mitzvah in an Italian restaurant, mind you. <laughs> My lord, yeah. a nice Italian restaurant. A very nice okay. Italian restaurant. Uh, the song of the night was Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. You are younger than me. My yeah. God. I forget about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and yeah, man, I was in there. I was in synagogue. I had my young gone. He was school the whole time. You didn't. No, you see, I didn't. I cheated. I didn't really. So you just did not. No, no. Your I parents. Just the money. Your parents are nice. Yeah. So they let you do the bar mitzvah without having to do the fucking Hebrew school. Mm -hmm. So your mom's Jewish. My mother is Jewish, um, and you know we have we have great we have great Jewish dinners like Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. First text message you ever sent me. Good Shabbos. Yep. Good Shabbos. Kept it. He kept it real. Yep. Our, have you gotten approached yet by like the Jewish media yet? No, I haven't gotten approached by the Jewish media, but somebody today, who I won't mention, was like, "Why you don't go so hard for Jewish people?" No, I don't think he'd be like promoting or pushing that like that thing like Jew. And how big you're gonna be? And I was like, "Wait, was that me five minutes ago?" You're talking about <laughs> I remember saying that. Somebody's like, "You know how big you're gonna be?" And he's like, "This has never happened before." It's like every every Jew is going to. His black father wasn't in his life, which is why Pusha T said this bar to get under it, Drake's yeah. skin. Your father walked away at five, hell of a dad thing. Marriage is something that Sandy never had, Drake. How you a winner, but she keep coming in last place. Monkey suit, Dennis, you parade him. A Steve Harvey suit, nigga made him. Confused, always felt you weren't black enough. Afraid to grow it because your fro wouldn't nap enough. Damn. Drake didn't do what the average black American would do and hold their father accountable. Drake do got straight hair, I believe. I don't think he has like coarse hair or even anything remotely close to it or even like curly hair. 
Bull for not being president, but basically bought his love once he got money. Drake is so damn out of touch with his blackness, he even said nigga with the hard R. It just sort of, it bugged me, man. It, it bugged me because it was like somebody I looked up to at one point. It was somebody that I was like, I used to see out and be like, yo, that's that nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. He open be like, yo, that's that nigga. Not realizing he was saying it wrong because I'm pretty sure his white friends or family said these things around him. And he didn't realize the pain behind that word because he's not a black American. He's a Canadian. Canadians don't fight for black rights and don't teach about black slavery. He doesn't have the slightest clue of what black Americans went through and still go through, which is why. Especially being, especially he went to like a predominantly like Jewish school. Like he definitely don't have, he have no idea, bro. <laughs> have the slightest clue of what black Americans went through and still go through, which is why he thought it was okay to mock slavery with this line here. Always rapping like you about to get the slaves free. So this has nothing to do with skin complexion or him being mixed as brilliant as k dot is and all the easter eggs everyone tries and find it's almost like no one tried to understand this at all you would think people would dig up the reasons why kendrick called out his blackness just like the average in denial white person who acts like they're pro-black they hang mm -hmm. with the black people and listen and dress like our culture but then will say a backhand comment about slavery or stereotypes typical comments when they're angry during wow. a dispute that's exactly what drake did when he brought up slavery using that bar to mock kendrick as if slavery is something to joke about a very white thing to do to have your jewish white mom open the track to family matters saying this maybe in this song you shouldn't start by saying and drake saying nigga right after nigga i said it i know that you mad and drake <laughs> saying nigga right after the way you said it though it's a nah, you know what i said it looks like wait what <laughs> After it for his mom is very telling on which side Drake is for real on. Drake doesn't have black values. He vultures on black culture. He gatekeeps his black peers, which is all colonizer traits. Drake is more white culturally and soulfully than he is black. And unfortunately, this is always going to be a touchy subject, an uncomfortable subject. If you're white and really don't have a racist soul in your body, then you wouldn't take this shit personally. You would understand that there is racial issues and you should know these topics aren't about you specifically. This is about the ones that are blatantly racist and also the ones that are in denial racist Facts. and not to get into a whole nother topic but for the dense people let me help you understand how this is something not to play about. People think it's funny and say oh get over it and say oh why are you still angry that's old. Let me give you some food for thought. In 1964 civil rights was passed and gave black Americans their human rights. Donald Trump would have been 18 years old. Joe Biden would have been 22 years old and reverend jesse jackson the man who marched next Damn. to dr martin luther king jr for our rights he's still alive to this day so what does this mean all the people who yeah that's what i'd be telling people bro like bro seg segregation racism bro that shit was not too long ago bro people be thinking that shit like a hundred years no that's not too long ago bro like people need to realize that like your grandparents great-grandparents all they all know and her stories have been through it bro tormented and harassed black americans during these movements are still alive they have stories that they tell their own grandchildren the old people you see walking around when you grocery shop when you go to the mall when you go to the movies just every day outside old people these are the people who either said no colors allowed or they were the other ones that were fighting for our rights. So stop acting like this is something that happened so long ago when the people who did horrible things are still alive today. Right. So yes, that's why Kendrick called out Drake's blackness. A black person understands these things. A white person doesn't. And he wasn't raised black. He was raised by a white family. And if K-Dot were to talk about the Holocaust in the same humor as Drake, he would have been shunned and held accountable. Oh, yeah. Everyone would have sp yeah, he'd have been canceled, been done for. Like, his show would have been gone. Yeah. <laughs> 
he would have been canceled. Oh my God. Viral out of control. Black, white, it don't matter what race you are. For some reason, the Holocaust is more touchy to the American people, to the whole world even, than black issues. And that's a problem. It's crazy how the double standards work against black people. But yeah, so far, that's all the Easter eggs I caught in the video. If you guys got more Easter eggs to point out, go ahead and let me know. I mean, I've seen some Easter eggs too, where it was um, DJ Mustard was wearing the blue Jays hat, which is a Canadian baseball team, but that ain't no Easter egg. I mean, that was obviously, we, we could tell what that was. But if y'all <laughs> caught anything that I didn't, put it in the comments. Let's read what you've seen. This video, hands down, is video of the year, song of the year. This is literally is going to go down in the history books. This is top five easily best diss record of all time. And it might be a stretch, but I'm calling it best. I'm calling it top three best disses of all time, only because of Facts. the impact that it created and because of the context behind the whole diss song. All Bro, the whole world, well, not the whole world, but the whole, like, the hip-hop community is talking about it, bro. It's, it's hands down top three, top two. All those other diss songs are usually because two people were beefing and they want to fight each other. This started as a friendly competition, but once Drake took it to a racial situation, talking about slavery, taking it personal, talking about family, then the context with him coming out as a gatekeeper, sending cease and desist letters, and even possibly being a PDF, it turns into a whole different situation. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoy it. As always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and I'll see you for the next one.